Peggy 18. My name is David Hughes and I'm a disease biologist. I study infectious diseases and I'm an assistant professor of biology and entomology at Penn State University. So the premise of the game is that we have a disease jumping from one organism to another. If we take a step back and look at all the diseases that we humans have, we find that 60% of those diseases have indeed jumped from animals. We're constantly moving across this border between the human world and the animal world. And as we do so, we invite parasites to jump that border. AIDS is the classical example. It jumped from being a chimpanzee, where it doesn't seem to be particularly virulent or dangerous, into humans. Consequently, 75 million people have become infected by HIV, 35 million people have died. And there are many more examples besides that. The classical example is the 1918 bird flu. After the First World War, this killed more individuals than the First World War itself. That jumped from an avian source into humans. Cordyceps fungi are a group of organisms who live exclusively in insect bodies. They're parasites. The most interesting interaction is when they're infecting ants. The fungus induces a suite of chemical changes inside the body of the ant. And this causes the individual to leave the nest. The ants ascend small saplings in the understory vegetation. And they have what really does appear to be a directed behavior. They're moving towards the midpoint of a leaf. And there, they're finding the tissue and they're biting deeply into it. Once the ant is dead, it grows a long stalk from the back of the head. And this is the stalk which will produce spores. And by dying above the ant colony, what is essentially happening is that the fungus has invented a sniper's alley of infection, where spores are being hurled down on top of them. And this is how the infection reoccurs in, in the society. So the essential question is, could this cordyceps fungi be a problem for humans? We're constantly surrounded by fungal spores. There are billions of spores which we inhale every single day. And our immune system has evolved to deal with those, or otherwise we would have a very, very short life indeed. But there can be circumstances where fungal diseases do get into our bodies and infect us. It's not just our increasing population that's a problem, we're also turning up the thermostat on the planet. And this leads to massive problems in and of itself. Another problem, of course, is the airplane. We have this ability to move across the planet over the course of hours. We see this in a classical example, which was this SARS outbreak 10 years ago, where we had a disease traveling from Hong Kong to Canada and then throughout the world on a very, very short time scale. So what we're doing with this world is we're creating a place which in the immortal phrase is hot, flat and crowded. And these unholy trinity are working together to lead to ever increasing diseases. And that's a problem for us. So in the game, we see the human population being eradicated by a parasitic organism. Could that happen? In our sanitized, urbanized world, we probably think that it's unlikely. But if we look at the world through a historical lens, we don't have to go far until we see these massive population crashes. In certain parts of Europe during the bubonic plague, which started around about the 1348 and then lasted for about 600 years, we see massive population crashes, as many as half of the people dying. So it really doesn't take much imagination to think a really heavily populated city such as Mexico or New York City of some infectious organism getting in there. And if it doesn't reduce our population considerably, it will at least create massive panic. 